Hello everyone, my name is Primitiva, and welcome back to this series, where I try to create a cohesive and believable ecosystem out of the Kanto region. There are three episodes of this series so far, and they're all pretty much connected with each other, so if you haven't checked out those yet, I highly recommend you check them out before diving into this one. Last time, I talked about the life around the trees, and on the ground, and the very powerful herbivores that live in those places. Alakazam being the strongest, due to its immense psychic abilities, but I did mention that there could be, possibly, one Pokemon out there that could actually hunt Abra, but which Pokemon could that be? I'm of course talking about the dark dogs known as Houndour and Houndoom. These social pack hunters have no issue whatsoever catching a few psychic types. If you've seen my collab with Birdkeeper Toby, you might just be confused why I even decided to include Houndoom in this, because in that video we kind of concluded that Houndour just doesn't evolve naturally in the Kanto region. But I wanted to include it in here because I think it would be more interesting and, well, fun. Plus, me and Toby aren't working together on this series, so I wanted to make it my own thing and separate from his work. Anyway, their dark typing naturally renders them resistant to psychic abilities, like with Abra sensing danger, and has a much harder time sensing these dogs, even as babies, Houndour hunt together, using very coordinated attacks to push their prey in a corner and communicate to each other for optimal catch rate. Communication is key in these packs, using their cries to describe what they're feeling and howling at dawn to ward off others, as this is their territory and theirs alone. Abra can still sense these Pokemon, but it's much harder to spot, especially if they are very careful and walk silently. They may even have one act as a distraction and follow the teleportation patterns until it's time to strike. Another hunting strategy they could also do is scorch the field around their prey so that they can't escape. Since they're babies, I can't imagine them eating large prey, but more other babies, as gruesome as it sounds. Like Abra, but also Pokemon like Pidgey, Rattata, and just others that are around the same size. Maybe even slightly bigger, because they do hunt in packs. And speaking of scorching, Houndoom's fire breath is really dangerous. Not only is it super hot, but it also contains toxins. So if you get burned, the pain never goes away. That's certainly a terrifying side effect. I can imagine this being really strong when hunting prey. Multiple never-ending burns will certainly make its stamina drop to zero within a few hours, and these Pokemon surely look like they have the endurance to keep chasing their prey for hours upon hours. So if you find a pack of these in the wild and they're hungry, you might be screwed, unless of course you have a Water-type Pokemon with you. Abra is still on their menu, but Kadabra probably too. Heck maybe even Alakazam. Sure, their psychic abilities are really powerful, but I mean if you're up against dark types, yeah, that's a bad matchup. Other large prey items are likely ready for their stomachs too. They hunt similarly to wolves, who tend to go for larger prey, and what can that prey really do back? Primeape is perhaps the only Pokemon capable of fighting back due to its typing. Heracross could definitely try, but it's also weak to fire, and as we all know, that fire is dangerous. Leaders are chosen by fighting amongst each other, and the one who has the sharpest, most backwards-facing horns takes this role. Kind of an odd way to measure strength, but they probably also just keep fighting until one is standing. As you've probably noticed, these Pokemon are extremely similar to wolves, due to their social nature and pack hunting behavior. Just add some deathly toxic fire to it. Since these Pokemon only appear in Route 7, it seems like they've just moved to Kanto, although I doubt that they're doing bad because their strategy of slowly burning down their prey seems like a very effective way of hunting. But there's another fire-type canine Pokemon line that they also share their habitat with. And of course, we all know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the OG dogs, Growlithe and Arcanine, who also are very similar to the Houndoom line. Just like Houndour, it also protects its territory with barking and biting its foes not letting anyone in. Unlike Houndour, they seem to have a better sense of smell instead of brute strength. I can still see packs of these Pokemon scorching the fields around their prey, but also perhaps finding prey that is already worn down with their scent, which is certainly an advantage. Their prey is likely the same as Houndour's minus Abra, of course. When it evolves into Arcanine, it also gains a tremendous amount of speed. So maybe instead of long pursuits like Houndoom, 
Arcanine is more about catching its prey super fast. You can already imagine others burning the field, so the prey has nowhere to go. And then the Arcanine swoops in and finishes the job very quickly. Its barking can convey a sense of magnificence. So while still sounding dominant to others, it's probably less aggressive than Houndoom. And because of this less aggressive nature, it probably meant that it was easier to domesticate by humans. I mean, just look at how many people have a Growlithe or an Arcanine compared to Houndour and Houndoom. Because of their friendly nature, these Pokémon seem to be less about hierarchy and who's exactly the strongest, but more so about working together to obtain a goal, which is in this case, prey. There are of course people with Houndoom out there that perhaps use them to protect their farms, or maybe they use them as herding dogs to get a bunch of Mareep together, but the Arcanine line is just, well, less aggressive. Although that may have been influenced by humans too. I believe that these two lines are in direct competition with each other, and sure, the Arcanine line has humans favoring it more, but the ruthlessness and toxic breath of the Houndoom line? I don't know, it just might kick out the Arcanine line in time. If you're both hunting the same food, in this case large prey, it can get tricky, because most animals don't often share the exact same niche. But there's another Pokemon line out there that are also fiery canids that live in the Kanto region. I'm of course talking about the lovable Ninetales line. These mysterious foxes and the way that they hunt really sets them apart from the other canids and allows them to live among them. Niche partitioning is when two animals who share an identical niche can coexist in the same ecosystem. Instead of eventually having the other species become extinct, they both are able to live on. Ninetales to me is a great example of this in Kanto, because foxes hunt smaller prey, and they also hunt alone, instead of wolves who hunt bigger prey and do so in packs. So the Ninetales line eats the small meat that the Arcanine and Houndoom line both don't touch, and vice versa. It also helps that foxes are pretty omnivorous, and can also eat fruits and various plants. Whether the Houndoom or Arcanine line wins in the end doesn't really matter to the Ninetales line. But what do these fiery foxes eat though? Well, as a Vulpix, I think that Oddish and Bellsprout might just be easy pickings. It can torch them real easy. Because of its size, it might stick to more plants instead. But when it evolves into Ninetales, that means that more meat is on the menu. It would mostly still consist of common small prey though, such as mainly Pidgey and Rattata, but also Jigglypuff and Meowth. Ninetales can be super brutal though, oddly enough hypnotizing its prey, burning it to a crisp, controlling its mind, and you know, of course, the good old cursing your family for years to come. But it seems like a Pokemon that's smart enough to know when it can't win a fight. So if it runs into either the Houndoom line or the Arcanine line, well, it knows it's not in a good spot and it knows it probably can't win, so it'll just get away ASAP. In contrast to these canids, there's a very powerful feel of Pokemon that is, to my surprise, pretty common in the region. One you probably don't think of immediately when you think of Kanto. But of course, that is for next time. So tell me, what did you think of these awesome fiery canids? And is there anything you would like to add to this? Please let me know in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I got lots of cool stuff on the channel and I always got more coming. In case you're feeling generous, I also have a Patreon, which is in the description down below. It's only one buck a month and it really helps me with this channel. But with that being said, I hope y'all have a good day, night or morning, and as always, take care.